bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paolo De Rosario. And we give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Jeff Manuel. And it's tonight's game plan. No Raymond Almazan, no problem for the Meralco Bolts. We'll break down their big Game 3 win versus Magnolia. And did they give us some takeaways on how to stop Paul Lee, Calvin Abueva, and Ian Sangalang? We'll spill our hot takes as Rebisco Philippines made their first appearance in the 2021 Asian Men's Club Volleyball Championship. And we'll chat with a pair of weightlifting champions, Rose Jean Ramos and Janith Hippolito, fresh from their stint in the IWF Youth World Championships. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. Now, let's begin with that big win of the Morocco Bulls in Game 3 of their PBA semifinal series against the Magnolia Hotshots, Bambansang Manok. Chris Newsom drained the dagger, while Nard Spinto was hailed the best player of the game after charging the Bolts to a victory even with the absence of a certain Raymond Almazan. For Magnolia, it was their big three of Paul Lee, Calvin Abueva, and Ian Sangalang who led the team in scoring once again. Now let's break down just how dangerous this Morocco Bolt squad is and how they contain the Magnolia Hotshots from Bansang Manok in Game 3. Joining me for our discussion is, uh, they say it's my favorite partner. Say it, no. say it. I don't know, but it's Admit Jet it. Manuel. Admit it's engineer it. Jet Manuel. Jet, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm really happy to be your favorite partner on this show. So okay, everything's okay. Everything's good for me. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So let's talk about that game. I'll, I think we should start mm -hmm. at the end. Uh, that okay. Chris Newsom game winner, and we actually have footage of that coming up right now. So Chris Newsom nailing this one, uh, despite uh, despite the pressure early on by Calvin Abueva powering through it, and actually Calvin Abueva coming out worse after it. As you take a look at that, him trying to gamble for that steal, the no call, and you had Newsom sinking that bucket. Remember, at this point in the game, Magnolia were outscoring the Maralco Bolts by a lot in the fourth quarter. What does it say about Chris Newsom? and the rest of the balls who managed to hold on. Well, you talk about Chris Newsom. He played 42 minutes in this game. Of course, to the absence of a couple of guys in the rotation, aside from Raymond Almas and Travis Jackson, Aaron mm -hmm. Black. Um, but he just came out big. I mean, if you look at uh, the Bolt squad and you're going to go to one guy at the end of the game, it's always going to be Chris Newsom. And in that play specifically, his ability to you know, come out in the clutch and nail that after playing for 42 minutes, I mean, that's just what sealed it. Uh, for them, but if you talk about uh, that whole game in general and that fourth quarter, I think it's 18 to 2 or 18 to 4 run to start that fourth quarter from Magnolia just shows the power that Magnolia has. But it was just a little bit, you know, too little, too late for them to, to climb back, uh, you know, in, in that ball game, in that fourth quarter. And the Miracle Ball just held on by a thread to come out to that victory. It's a huge victory for them because I think it was, it's almost as if a do or die game for them. Yeah, yeah, because only one team has come back from an 0-3 deficit in a best of seven series in the PBA and that's the San Miguel Beermen against Alaska back mm -hmm. in the day. So you have this uh, team of the Morocco Bolts. We talk about not having Almazan, but they also did not have other pieces. Again, still no Aaron Black, still no Travis Jackson, still no Jammer Hamito. All of those guys are parts of the rotation of Coach Norman. And the guy who stood up today was not just Chris Newsom, but the best player of the game, Nards Pinto, who really played beyond, I guess, what is expected from him. When you think of Nards, you don't really think of him as a star player, but he played like a star today. Exactly. I mean, you know, if you ask, uh, if you ask me, I'm going to say Nards Pinto is one of the more underrated players because of what he can do for a basketball team. You know, he's been playing spot minutes, he's been playing filling minutes. I think he's just playing his role uh, in this squad because, of course, you have Chris Newsom holding the ball, but he's a very legitimate point guard. The way he played tonight, rebounding the ball, playing defense, uh, the, steals he, the steal he had, and the points he was scoring off a good, you know, one-on-one -on -one place against uh, Gio Halalon, I think that's really what edged out uh, this game, and he stepped up big with the absence, of course, like we talked about, Aaron Black, Travis Jackson, these guys are in the rotation, but he just stepped up big, and that's the type of player that he is. But if you look at another guy that I feel really played or balled out in this ball game, who was a key for them, was Mac Bello, the third leading scorer of the squad. He came out, he wasn't averaging, you know, he didn't, he didn't show these, this, this type of game until this game where it mattered the most, and, you know, the, the way, the energy he had uh, coming into this ball game was just 
uh, the threes he made, the shots he made. I think it's just what um, what Meralco needed to edge out against uh, Magnolia in this ballgame. So Macbello actually had a very efficient uh, day, especially when you look at the minutes played and the points he actually did score. So when you look at uh, what the Meralco Bolts have done, again, trying to fill in the holes that are there due to their injured players, you also have to take a look at the other side, which is the Magnolia Hachas Pambansang Manok. They had their full complement, but were unable to get things going. Mm -hmm. What do you feel was the biggest difference maker here, despite the guys like Lee Sangalang and Calvin Abueba still getting numbers, but not to win? I mean, it, yeah, the big three is the big three. I mean, you have those three names. They're always going to be there. They're, they're that steady presence that um, uh, Magnolia has. But if you want to limit them, I think that's the key for uh, Meralco to come out with this victory. They have to limit as much as they can. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be almost impossible to limit all three at the same time. But they really have to limit their looks. The way they played tonight, they played tremendous team defense against the big three of Magnolia. Paul Lee, he, he had a good, I mean, a decent shooting night. It wasn't his best. We see him score 30, but they were challenging all the shots that he, he was taking, making it difficult for him. Ian Sangarang in the paint. He was the leading scorer because, of course, of the absence of the height and athletic uh, defensive ability of uh, Almazan for Meralco. And you have to also keep looking at, I think, the top uh, contender for BTC, the best the conference, this, uh, this conference with Calvin Abueva, because his energy and his physicality is going to be there. But you have to make an effort, which I feel that Meralco did in this game, coming out with more urgency to stop them, the energy of, um, of Calvin Abueva the shooting of Paul Lee, the rebounding and inside presence, even without Raymond Almazan, they just made it difficult for them. So yes, they did get, you know, they did lead their team in scoring, but the team defense of Meralco edged out them today. So Paul Lee was actually an interesting story because he did get hurt in that first quarter. He hurt his shoulder and uh, bumping into Reynel Hugnatan. And you know, when you bump into Reynel Hugnatan, it's always going to be difficult, tough, yeah. right? So uh, yeah, he had to get his shoulder worked on. He came back with tape and then he had that big fourth quarter that almost saw them come back from that deficit. Mm -hmm. And you look, at, uh, what, you look at what Paul Lee has done here so far. If he's not fully back into, if he's not fully healthy, will that be a cause of concern for Magnolia? I know he finished the game strong, but then you never know how injuries like that do develop in the future. Well, Paul Lee is always going to be, I think, the most important guard piece for them in, in their rotation. He's the best scorer, I feel. They just You can put the ball in his hands and he's going to find a way to get a bucket. So mm -hmm. losing a guy like that, of course, is going to be an issue. But if you look at Magnolia as a team, uh, they have the talent. On paper, realistically, they are more talented than Maralco. They have a couple yeah. of guys that can fill that role. So losing Paul Lee or having an injured Paul Lee is just going to make it more difficult for them to edge out Meralco, but I still believe that Calvin, that um, Ian Sangalang, that the rotation of the guards with Halalon and Baroka, I think they're still a formidable uh, force, even with a you know, hobbled Paul Lee. Yeah, and you know, uh, again, we're looking at some of their highlights here, and it's just incredible that, uh, that that all happened. And of course, we have to, again, bring it back to the Meralco Bolts. They did win this one, uh, really off the strength of guys who weren't really contributing, you mentioned, uh, who wouldn't regularly contribute due to the rotation. So you mentioned a while ago, Mac Bello had a very efficient night. Nards Pinto coming up with the best player of the game awards. Uh, Noy Baklao coming up big. He's big. He uh, was big, for, yeah. Again, a very, very shortened rotation. If you're Coach Norman Black and you're looking at what these guys have done here in this particular game, how hopeful are you that this is still a series going at, right after Game 4? It's still, a, it's still a series for them. It's going to be difficult though if I'm Coach Norman. I'm going to understand yeah. the situation. But it's still a series for them. I think they, they have to come out even with even more urgency, with even more effort, as difficult as that sounds, because Magnolia is really a strong, very, very formidable team. So if they want to try to even a series in this next game, it's gonna, they have to play as a team, they have to focus in on a team defense, on their concept, and not rely on just one person to edge them out for them. Absolutely. So it's, I know we say that it's, uh, we can't really expect Meralco to lean on one guy, but who is the character in this group right now that you feel needs to step up and really fill in the void at the moment for this Maralco team to extend the series even further and maybe even steal it. I'm going to say Noi Baklao if, uh, if uh, Almazan can't play and Mac Bello. He mm -hmm. really has to come out big. Mac Bello, you have, the, you have guys in the guard position that's going to contribute. You have Newsom, you have uh, Pinto, but Mac Bello is the key for me. He has to come out, he has to rebound the ball, he has to play great defense, he has to shoot the three and he has to score 
if they want to have a chance to go uh, to win against uh, Magnolia in, the, in Game Four. Yeah, you know, it's it's just incredible uh, this Meralco team uh, rebounding the way they did. That was very big. There was mm -hmm. always an e emphasis in that, and uh, they really bossed that battle around. It was going to be always going to be tough, but then. There you have it. Okay, stop being an analyst now, all right? You're, okay. you're a host now okay. and you're going to end this segment. Yeah. I okay, know. all right. Okay, so all right. thank you, Bao, for asking me those <laughs> questions. And thank you, Jet. Oh, my God. Thank you to myself for analyzing that greatly. <laughs> and after the break, it's time to spill the hot takes as Rebisco Philippines made their first appearance in the 2021 Asian Men's Club Volleyball Championship. Stay tuned. You're watching the game. And welcome back to the game. The Rebisco Philippines men's team saw action in their first game in the AVC 2021 Asian Men's Club Volleyball Championship. And to give us his hot takes on our men's team's performance in the club tournament, the doctor is definitely in tonight. Doc Volleyball, AJ Pareja joins us live. Doc, good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, thanks for having me. Oh, well. yeah. oh wow. Oh, Kanina, nice. parang you... Nasa kotse. Yung bayan na Kanina. Oh, good job. Oh, nice. The doctor is in. In the nick oh. of time. In the nick of oh. time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Doc. Uh, so, you know, your diagnosis so far on this team, on scale of 1 to 10 maybe, how can you rate the team's performance so far? Um, well, they're up against someone really strong right away iran is a heavy favorite when it when it comes to uh, the asian uh, league no so um a lot of uh, good stuff that we can see already but it's still a young team adapting a uh, it's only fairly recent that the philippines at least the men's volleyball team has adapted the more modern uh, style of playing so there are lots of good points but it also we also have to address what happened in the third set which yeah. was uh, demolition basically but first and foremost uh, one uh, good thing that is very much noticeable is of course uh, the setter uh, Oware Tamar like when they're in system the speed of his sets to the pins is like it's really fun to watch how fast the balls are going to the pins from yeah. the left side or the right side and I know that a lot of people were complaining about the angle of the or the view of the match, but I love that angle because you can appreciate everything from a scouting perspective, not from an entertainment perspective, but a uh -oh. scouting perspective. And you can see how fast the sets are going. And um, but that is in system. So being a young setter, um, if he can also do that kind of distribution, fast distribution in the off system and be more of a risk taker. Yeah. Um, because dun sila medyo na ano eh, um, when they're off system, it's really just sitting ducks for Iran, just camping and just expecting whatever comes their way. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Sorry, Doc. So, in, in other words, it, it felt a bit more predictable uh, the way that he that he maneuvered uh, on, on the floor because uh, if correct me if I'm wrong when you say uh, off system it feels like a bit maybe off script or something that they can't your opponent, opponent can't predict as much yeah. yeah mostly off system happens when they're in transition meaning balikan yung bola no so um, when they're in system when they're receiving they get a good pass talagang nagagawa ni Retamar na execute niya yung mga fast sets niya but when it comes to off-system, when they're scrambling for the ball, uh, dun biglang, uh, 
nawawala yung consistency when they're in system. So that's something that uh, we can expect from them to work on it on the long run. But so far, so good, at least. You know, uh, just just so our viewers know, actually, uh, Doc, we were going to introduce the fact that you had five hot takes for us, and that was the first one. So yeah. we're yeah. gonna move on to the <laughs> second one right now. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Which is oh, which is the <laughs> notable struggle ni Omandal early on to stay in yeah. system, naman. Now, we were talking about that yeah. in system, off system. Uh, what did you see with him? Yeah, um, because he's one of the heavy hitters for Team Philippines right now with without uh, Bagunas and Espejo. Iran really just brought all the balls to him. And um, I know Zhao is relatively newer to the position compared to Bagunas and Espejo because if I remember correctly, in his college career, he was, he was switching between mi middle and open. And mm -hmm. noticeable difference when it comes, like for example, with Mark. If he gets a really strong serve, he can still recover quick enough to go for a back row hit or a pipe. And that's what we were sorely missing in this match, in the first and the third set, yeah. is the pipe or the back row attack coming from Umandalen Almendras. Yeah, so, so medyo nabantayan tuloy yung mga pins kasi there's no significant threat coming from the back row. Yeah, so that so that mm -hmm. we really felt that uh, as you mentioned the absence of some of uh, the bigger names out there. And uh, Jet, the third one, I think it may be in your wheelhouse kasi grab system pa rin yung eh. Oh yeah, third hot was a significant level up in the Philippine system of having no more combinations of X plays and slide attack. Pa breakdown naman break uh, yung yeah, uh, X plays and slide attack. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah um, uh, ever since I started doing the analyst and commentating, um, I've always been a proponent of um, getting rid of those combination X plays and running attack because it doesn't really work anymore for the higher men's level, especially in the world. Because if it was working, everybody would be doing it, like the top teams, but you yeah. barely see it in the international scene. And I'm happy that they're embracing that kind of modern take in the sport that there's not much because the pipe is already the combination per se so and especially they're up against big people so those kind of combination plays don't really work well if you're up against blockers who would just need to take a slight shuffle to cover your uh, attack already so it's all about spreading the blockers out to the pins then just surprise them with a quick one in the middle with a either with a quick or a pipe so, yun, medyo talagang kulang pa yung pipe attacks natin kanina na talagang specialty ni Mark eh. So, yeah. But at least adjustment is uh, starting to get that. Is you're seeing signs yeah. of it. Yeah. Oh. So, the next thing is, again, this is very technical and, and I like this. I, I feel Actually, like, I'm oh, a lot. this is a lecture. I, I love this. Thank you, Doc. So, <laughs> minute details. That's, that's my favorite word of the day. Minute. Uh, minute. minute details, like holding position too long after dig takes yeah. much needed time to be in system for Team Philippines. What do you mean by that? I don't know if it can fit in the camera, but if you notice when they're getting the strong hits from Iran, yeah, like if they like they good they, they make a good dig, like the ball is held up, but they are holding their position too long, mm -hmm. and like, but uh, as expected in indoor at least, I can really appreciate this with indoor right now because I'm already playing beach. In beach, we can get away with holding our position because it's all about waiting for beach, but in indoor where it's really fast paced everything is going rapid fire yeah. you don't have time to hold your position because uh, especially if you're the openers like Umandal and Almendras if you hold your position you're out of the attack options already because everything comes rapid fire especially at this mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. how much different dog I want to ask how much different uh, different is this team when the last time you saw them to see games 2019 uh, and how you know the last time you saw them and how different are they now in the way they're playing uh, well, right now, it's they really embrace the modern style of system. So it's uh, it's a still fairly young team. Tagal nila na bakan from the Sea Games, eh. So um, the expectations will be high, but considering they're a really young team and just recently adapted that or fully embraced that modern style of playing, there's still a lot of work still to be done. But we know that if this core team continues on with this program, they'll be, they'll be a significant threat in the Asian level a couple of years from now. Yeah, so 
you know, with that in mind, we actually want to I want to actually bring up your final take, which was uh, it was commendable for the Philippines to have strong jump servers, but they still need more work to force teams uh, out of out of system like Iran. Now, given in mind, you mentioned a while ago that this was the one of the stronger powerhouses uh, men's, uh, in the men's field, uh, talking about the, their opponent that they faced against. Based on what we saw, what can we expect from the national team in this particular tournament? Well, lagi sinasabi, di ba, when joining tournaments is to gain experience, gain experience, but not mm -hmm. necessarily compete. But I do believe that um, this team will still gain that experience, but still be able to compete. Of course, Gulat Kagad, it's a very strong opponent yeah. right out of the bat. Then, for sure, Coach Dante will go back to the drawing board. And especially that demolition that happened in the third the set. Third it's set, all about yeah. the service receipt. Yeah. The service receipt. Like, Iran got very confident about their services, that they were going all out and forcing us out of system and if we can find or if coach dante can find that uh, kind of confidence also when it comes to serving for team philippines then we're, st we're still gonna compete in this uh, avc well definitely a baptism uh, through fire for our yeah. men's national team and hopefully uh, they can start competing just like as you said and make us all proud in the next coming days. Thank you very much, Doc AJ. We're so happy you're home safe uh, and that you're joining <laughs> us uh, without any stress. And we are I mean, we can't wait to hear from you soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me as always. All right. When we return, we'll get to know our country's newest weightlifting champions, Rose Jean Ramos and Janice Polito, fresh from their stint at the IWF Youth World Championship. Stay tuned if you're watching the game. Welcome back to the game. I'm Paolo De Rosario. This week's series of metal halls just keep on coming. And this time, it's a pair of Zamboanga natives who are the latest to bring honor to the country. And no, we're not just talking about Haydn Diaz. We have two more, two young ones. 16-year-old Rose Jean Ramos, who won two golds and one silver. While 14-year-old Janita Boloto took home a bronze in the recent IWF Youth World Championships held in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Tonight, the pair of weightlifting champs join us to talk about their winning experience. Welcome to the game and congratulations, Rosina Jeanette. Kamusta naman kayo? Okay naman po. 
Alright, unang-una sa lahat, congratulations at uh, gusto namin malaman, anong pinapakain sa inyo sa Zamboanga? Kasi grabe, lahat ng mga weightlifter doon, nagme-medal eh. Uh, ibang klase talaga. But if I'm not mistaken, may connection kayo kay Heidelin Diaz uh, in terms of uh, yung coach yata ninyo was a, is actually a relative of si Heidi. Tama ba yan? Yes. Uh, sino siya? Ano yung, ano yung role niya? Si, sino po? Si Coach oh, Allen? Oo. Oh, oh. Uh, ano po, relative siya niya, TID, and at the same time, coach namin po siya. Sabi, naging inspirasyon ba si Heidi sa inyong dalawa? Oo oh, yes, po. po. Ikwentuhan mo naman kami, ano, no, yung uh, pakiramdam nyo itong competition na to. Kinabahan ba kayo? Excited ba kayo? Ano yung nangyayari nung yung papunta sa, ano, or halo ng dalawa? Little nervous and little excited. Little excited little lang. lang. <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. Ba bakit bakit little excited? How ano yung confidence level niyo going into yung tournament na yon? Kasi first time namin po makalaro sa international competition po eh. Oo, so first time niyo pero parang parang walang kaba. Ganun ba talaga doon? An ano yung sinasabi sa inyo ng mga coaches niyo? Galingan namin. <laughs> Ginalingan na naman talaga ng okay, mga na medal na naman kayo eh. coach oh, talaga. Oh, oh, oh. Pero yung, yung mga training niyo, yung papunta sa competition, ano yung naging schedule niyo? I mean, leading up to this, ano yung schedule niyo? Nagtraining ba kayo with uh, with Heidelin, Ate Heidelin or paano kayo yung dalawa nagtraining at nagprepara para sa competition nito? Um, nagtraining ba kami sa gym ni Ate Heidelin? Every day, 2 hours ang training namin, morning and afternoon. So twice a day, no? Mahirap talaga. Oh, oh. Okay, well, uh, Rose, uh, let's talk about yung uh, achievement mo muna. When you talk about uh, yung age group mo, can you give us uh, a bit of a bit of a background kung gaano ka competitive yon? Again, uh, 16 years old. Can tell us kung ano yung sino mga nakalaban mo uh, going into that tournament? Indonesia. Indonesia pong dami, 10 countries po. 10 countries yung nakalaban niyo. So, ano yung mga like, base sa mga na lift mo dati? Can you tell us a bit about yung performance mo dyan sa Jeddah? Wait, may interview pa po, ma'am. Hey, <laughs> ano, ano yung... Uh, oh, okay, busy pala kayo. Sorry may na. Oh, oh. <laughs> <May> na <laughs> pero, pero, Rose, tell us a bit about yung uh, weight na, na score mo. 45 category po ako naglaro. Oh, pero ano yung, uh, ano yung weight na, na score mo sa competition mismo? Ano yun? One... 147 po yung total ko. 147. Oh, yan ba yung personal best mo? Uh, opo. Ah, okay. Well, at least, ano, uh, same yeah, best for the competition. Oh. Oh, so, Rose, no, 45 kilos uh, women's division. Tapos, nakauwi ka ng dalawang gold medal and a silver. I mean, syempre, mahirap yun. In-expect mo ba nang papasok ka sa competition, sa training mo, na mananalo ka ng gold? Hindi po kasi nakikita ko yung mga kalaban ko, sobrang lakas. Mm -hmm. Tapos sobrang matigas ng katawan. Hindi oh. ko iniisip may medal po ako. Oh, well, uh, Jan si Janet, Janet naman. Oh, Janet, ikaw naman, uh, 14 years old uh, and nakauwi ka ng bronze. Uh, can you tell us a bit about yung mga naka nakalaban mo doon? Ano po kasi sila, di po kasi sila first timer. Ako sa, ano po, sa team, sa... Lahat po namin, ako, ako, pala, ako pa lang yung first timer po na magkakompete. Pero nakapag-bronze ka na. Ano yung sabi sa'yo ng coach mo after yung, after yung tournament mo? Uh, galingan ko pa daw po sa next para magka-treatment at stop. Well, syempre, you know, being young weightlifters, uh, excited na ba kayo for yung next na tournament ninyo? Kasi if I'm not mistaken, since first time ninyo, Siguro, you want to win more, obviously. Pero, are you looking forward to yung next challenge ninyo? Yes po. Of course, you know, simple, We're looking short, forward for them. and oh, sweet. Oh, oh syempre. Bata, bata, we, hope, bata. we hope to see you again soon, uh, see more medals for you. And I'm sure, makakita to ni Ate Heidi. Salamat, and uh, we hope to be able to cover more of your future tournament. Salamat ulit. Alright, so don't miss out on the brand new home of world-class international sporting events on Signal Premier Sports on Channel 272 HD.
that's the way to take an opening set. Fantastic try. This is what we prepare our whole life. This is what we dream of. All the action, all the drama, all the sport you'll ever need. Premier Sports. Watch out for the latest UFC and Formula One events as well as thrilling action from both the NFL and UEFA Champions League. All that and more in high definition can be enjoyed on open viewing on Signal Channel 272 until October 15. And thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Jet Manuel. Guys, it's weeknights here on One News, One Sports and One Sports Plus. I'm Paolo Del Rosario and this has been The Game.